Good morning, Mount Nebo. It is 9 o'clock. It is now time to start services. Ushers, can you man the doors? I was glad when I said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Again, it's 9 o'clock. It is now time to start services. The call to worship comes from Psalms 145, verses 1 and 2. In the ministry, justly. I will bestow thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come here once again thanking you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for our opportunity to be in your house one more day. One more day to give you all the glory and all the praise. We invoke our prayers upon this gathering. I pray for the preached word. I pray that you touch the heart of the one who is being for the word and touch those who will receive it. I thank you for the sunshine that shines upon us. But most of all, I thank you for the sun that shines in our hearts. Inhabit your praise. I pray that when blessings go up, praises come down. When praises go up, blessings come down. This I pray in my name of Jesus. Amen. Now I put a service in the hands of the deacon. short sleeves here for the last couple of days here it's just the the lord is just unique in all his in all of his creation is he not is he not this morning's scripture would be coming from the book of philippians uh, chapter 4 verses 8 through 13 and then i will uh, endeavor to lead us in a song and prayer if we could stand for the reading of the scripture philippians 8 I'm sorry, Philippians 4, starting at the 8th verse. Amen? Amen? Amen. And it reads as thus, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on those things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed to both be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ. Let me say that again. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader here, endure of his word, you may be seated. And to have that strength, you know, as I get a little further in my years, the girls will say I'm really old, y'all, but you know, <laughs> to get a little further in my years, I understand that I don't have to worry, I don't have to fret, the Lord's got my back. You know, the battle is already, the war is already won, won. I've got a few battles that I have to go through. But I know with the Lord on my side that I can do all things. And understanding that means that you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. Just let it dust off of you. So this morning, let's sing, we'll understand it better by and by. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests off succeed a bright sunshine in that land of perfect day when the mists have rolled away we will understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes oh, Oh, 
Father, you are the one. You're the only one, Heavenly Father, that sits up high and looks down low. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for being the first and the last. We thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you, Father, for being the beginning and the end. But most of all, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you've given us another opportunity to come before your presence, Heavenly Father, this morning in this, your house of praise, where you're already at. You have all power. You know it all. And you're everywhere at the same time. So we have to say thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us breath. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us strength. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us protection over the night, Heavenly Father. We know that the devil is going around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we thank you, Father, that, that, that you put the blood on the doorposts around us, Heavenly Father, this evening. You allowed the death angel to pass, pass our house this morning, Heavenly Father, while we slumber. We thank you, Father. We thank you for all the things that you've given to us throughout the week, throughout the night, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father, for jobs. We thank you, Father, for family. We thank you, Father, for government. We thank you for all the things that make our lives a lot easier so that we have the time to tell a dying world, Heavenly Father, that you're still alive. You're the only one that's alive. So we thank you, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, this day for all that are gathered to praise your name here at Mount Nebo, Heavenly Father, at Salem, at Morningstar, at Prince of Peace, all over the place, Heavenly Father. We come with the same goal. We come to worship, to refuel our tanks, Heavenly Father, this week, so we can go through this week to dodge the fiery darts of the devil. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to keep our pastor and his family in your prayer. Continue to put your words in his heart, Heavenly Father, so that he can give to us and we can go do what you have asked us all to do. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you because in your infinite wisdom, in your almighty grace, in your unmerited favor, Heavenly Father, that you sent your darling son, Jesus, to walk up Golgotha Hill, to have an old rugged cross on his shoulder, Heavenly Father. It was a cross that was his to bear, but it was not his to pay. We thank you, Father, that you put him on that cross. Put him in a borrow tomb, Heavenly Father. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, because on that third day, he rose, Heavenly Father, and now he sits on your right hand making intercession for us, giving us another chance. So we thank you for Jesus, that name that is above all other names in heaven and in earth, because it's in his mighty name we do pray. Amen. period. How many of you know that it is a blessing and a privilege just to be in his presence just one more day as we give him glory and praise because he deserves it and his mercy endures forever.
ministers in the pulpit, our virtual worshipers, and of course, all of you, good morning. Before our purpose and mission statement, I do have one card to read. Thank you. I would like to give thanks to the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church family for their calls, cards, and prayers. Thanks again, Deacon Chester French. Amen. And now won't you join me in reading our purpose and mission statement. The purpose of the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church is to bring men, women, and children to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to develop them into the likeness of Christ, to train them in the biblical principles of worship, prayer, and Bible study, to encourage one another by engaging in fellowship, practicing stewardship, and rendering service, to glorify God and edify the body. Dream it, dare it, define it, do it. Thank you, praise God. At this time, we would like to recognize any visitors that we might have. If you are visiting with us this morning, we would love for you to stand and give us your name and, of course, any other information you choose. Won't you stand, please? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Is there another? Amen. We certainly thank you for choosing Mount Nebo this morning for your place of praise and worship. Please, we would we invite you to come back at any time you choose. Thank you. Would you please remain standing? Thank you, Sister Hall. Deacon French, I know you're not a visitor. We know you, man. We just miss your presence so much. And Sister French wouldn't dare sit in that seat until you got back. <laughs> Y'all give God a hand of praise for having brought Brother French back. Amen. And then our visitors, those, those, they, 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 those two gentlemen, they just got to be of the loins some kind of way of Brother Sam Cuffey. They just got to be some kind of way. They look just like him. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Y'all ain't caught it yet. But, but, but they, they, they just like him. Um, and he just, he just sitting and he's smiling. It's good to have his, his, his family with him. And then Sister Dawson and Sister Celia Allen is walking in. Give God a hand of praise for them. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Good to see Brother James Fanshaw. I know he's been in, in some, having some health challenges recently. And then everybody that's here, all of these sisters, um, good to have you. This is our fellowship time. I didn't, earlier in the week, I thought I was going to end up missing this particular Sunday. Um, I don't know what I came down with, um, but it ain't COVID. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it ain't COVID. How I know it's COVID, I took a test. It's not COVID. And you can hear I'm all stuffy and all that. And I, um, I just trusted God. Um, I was really stuffy yesterday and the whole week. And I just trusted God. I said, now, God, if you want me to preach, you gave me something. If you want me to get it to the people, you got to put my body in shape enough to do it. And Lord, I feel good this morning. Amen. The best I felt all week long, and God is to be glorified. Now, before you all stand, um, I want Brother Tom Wells to stand and bring a little attention to him. This brother um, um, had been away from Omaha for a period of time and has come back to Omaha and connected 
with our son, um, Chavez, Minister Chavez, and um, we're trying to put this thing together. Y'all like the sound of that bass? Y'all like the sound of that bass? We're going to put this thing together. I was, I was walking, I hope Sister Barbara don't mind me saying this, I was walking down and um, he was playing that bass and it was just sounding good. And Sister Barbara was back there just getting a little semi two step on. <laughs> and I told her, I said, You like the sound of that bass? She just smiled. But we're happy to have you, man. And hopefully we can put this thing together and let God be glorified. Amen. And when you play the day, play the thing loud so we can hear you real good. Amen. Now the rest of us, we're standing, we're going to fellowship all over the building. Happy to see everybody here. Brooklyn, I see you, Brooklyn. Happy to see everybody here. Y'all hug if you're hugging. Wave at the live stream. Fist bump. Kiss if you're kissing. Whatever that is that you're doing, just go and get it done. Come on, fellowship. Fellowship, fellowship. Fellowship and that's a good fellowship all over the building. However, you choose to fellowship, Sister Street. It's awesome to see you, Sister Street. Amen. It's awesome to see you, Sister Street. Amen. While you're fellowshipping, um, our um, youth people, um, director, Sister Holcomb, Sister Director now, Sister Washington, they are in place. Our youth annual emphasis week is fastly approaching. Let's hear them. Good morning, church. I am here to announce our annual youth spiritual emphasis for 2024. Sister Hall and I are very excited. We've been planning this. She's been on me to get this done. <laughs> our theme for this year is commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans, Proverbs 16.3. The dates for our youth spiritual emphasis week will be Wednesday, March 20th, Friday, March 22nd, Saturday, March 23rd, and Sunday, March 24th. On that Wednesday, it's gonna be our kickoff and it'll start doing prayer meeting. We'll have prayer meeting and then we'll take the children and youth downstairs to have a lesson on the theme. Afterwards, we'll give them a little light snack. On that Friday is going to be our shut-in for our teens, ages 13 through 18, one of my favorite events, where they'll come at 7 p.m. and we'll do our shut-in through 7 a.m. They'll get lessons about the theme, games, activities, lots of fun. I do need volunteers to help me watch those teens, please. And then that Saturday, March 23rd, that's when we have our group gathering for all ages. It's going to be at Sky Zone this year. Yay, Sky Zone. Uh, the time is 5 o'clock to 6.30. For Sky Zone, children 9 and under um, must be um, attended, must be accompanied by an adult. Okay, and then transportation to Sky Zone, which is 4215 South 133rd Street, will not be provided. Um, the kids start jumping at 5, so we're asking everyone to be there at 445 so that we can, the kids can get their full hour of jump time. And then afterwards, we'll meet in a party room for some pizza and drinks. So we are very excited about the uh, Youth Spiritual Emphasis Week. And then Sister Hall is going to talk about what we're going to be doing that Sunday. Good morning again. Sister Washington has done such a detailed job in explaining our Youth Emphasis Week, but it doesn't end there. On Sunday, March the 24th, our youth will uh, put on a program for us. Uh, at that time, the youth will, we will have three speakers. Uh, we will have 
a song from our a inspirational song from our youth choir. We will have a dance performance, and it will we will end with a wonderful message from our very own Ray Daniel Arvey. So please mark your calendar for March the 24th during our morning service. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot one final thing. Uh, in order for our youth to participate, we do have uh, permission slips, and I really need those permission slips signed, especially for Sky Zone, so we can keep track of our numbers. Um, we will, Sister Hall and I, after church, will stand in the back in the um, vestibule, and we'll pass out the permission slips for your uh, children to participate so we can keep track of the numbers. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you, um, youth directors. Um, we are praying mightily for some individuals. Um, we're praying um, for sister, um, not sister, brother, Jaden, uh, um, Edwards, um, actually for prayer for the him, little young brother. Y'all know he normally sits with his with his aunt and uncle. I um, want to pray for him in particular. Uh, then we want to lift up all of the names on our sick and shut in. If we can get them on the screen, thank you all, media ministry, and y'all see all the names. Um, in particular, just a name or two. Um, want to remember Deacon um, Dillard and Deacon. Martin, and then Sister Essie Jefferson, and several others, just remember them in prayer. The Reeve family want to continue to pray for, he's here with his wife, um, Brother Doug Chambers, and passing of his, his brother, um, uh, Michael Bruce Chambers, down in Houston, H-Town, Texas. Want to remember that family in prayer. Um, want to remember Stephanie Robinson, passing of minister, David Robinson, he was a character unto himself. If you really know him, he was a character unto himself and um, had a nice um, home-going service. And last time I mentioned this to you all, um, when I had talked to Sister Stephanie, she had said to me she didn't need all the calls um, immediately. And um, so I had asked you all to give her a week I translated that to give her a week, but she said to me that she really meant that she didn't want all the calls on one particular day. So she is welcoming calls. If you want to make a call, go by and see her, whatever. Um, give her encouragement. That will help along the way. Amen. I want to remember that family. And then, um, y'all remember his mother? Y'all remember his mother? When she was here, she would sit right over there. We called her Mother Robertson. Um, she's still alive, 92 years old, 92 years old. And um, I know what Dave got that jokester stuff from. He got it from his mama. i never forget um, my sons and I, uh, when she had moved here, um, I do more than just preach, y'all. I cut grass, I, I clean the house, I move furniture, all that stuff. So we were, we were helping her get her settled into her place. And um, Dave and I was there. And, um, and I told her, I said, Mother Robertson, I'm going to send, I'm going to ask some of these ladies at the church to um, come help you um, get your apartment all to you know, give you a little help. She looked at me with seriousness and said, Pastor, don't send no ladies, send me a man. And I said, Mother Robinson, what y'all going to do is still just look at one? <laughs> but she said, don't send me no woman. Send me. I said, oh, my God. But I, I, that's where he got it from, you know. <laughs> and uh, she's still alive um, in the D.C. area with family, 92 years old. As I know it, I think she's got some serious health challenges now, too. So I want to be in prayer with, for the whole family. And then church school. Um, it's, it's, it's just going along really well, coming back together. Thank all our instructors, students, and all that stuff. Um, let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. Um, the, um, what is it called? Sunlight saving signs, or daylight saving signs, whatever, is going to occur next Sunday. 
So that means it's, it's going to be dark, getting dark much later in the evening. So we won't have to worry about darkness. And um, let me say this, our security ministry, um, and I should have said this some time ago, they are doing some things really quiet on Sundays. They're doing some things, and on Wednesday night, they're doing some things. So if some individuals ask you to be out of the building by a particular time, can y'all just get out of the building? Amen. Security is important. And so thank, thank our security people. Um, I've been watching them, doing them sweeps and everything. Uh, I noticed it. I just didn't say a whole lot, but thank y'all, man. And then there are some other things we can't, can't, just can't say about that just now. Last thing, we have a van that's in good shape. Got a lot of gas in it, too. Hadn't had many problems with it. Got good tires on it. Got good seats in it. But we need a driver, drivers consistent to drive it. Amen. If you are interested in driving, we need at least four, whereas one individual would only have to drive on one Sunday and one Wednesday in a month. That is to say, if I drove this morning, then I would drive this coming Wednesday, and that I'll be done for the month of March. And then the month of April, I'll do the same thing. So where is Brother Parks? Where is Brother Parks? All right, to my right. We, he, he came and talked to me, and um, I told him I'd make an appeal. If you are interested, not if you're interested, since you're interested, talk to Brother Parks, and we can get you going. Um, we really need four persons to drive um, so that we don't wear any one person out. Amen. I really wish you respond to that one. Amen. Y'all feel all right? Come on, y'all feel all right? I'm going to ask our music ministry to sing whatever they prepare. And then we'll be back for preaching. Um, here's what I'm going to preach today. So you can get ready for this. How many of you were in church school this Wednesday, past Wednesday? How many of you were here? The adults, for sure. The kids had a different lesson, I'm sure. But adults, your Sunday school, your church school lesson came from where? The book of Jude. How many chapters are in Jude? Boy, y'all did your homework. Let me ask you another one. How many verses is in Jude? I didn't hear a whole lot of you, but y'all right, right there. I heard a whole lot with the chapters, but I didn't hear a whole lot with the verses. One chapter, 25 verses. And um, I'm for, for, for the sake and the context of preaching, you need to read the whole chapter. But I'm going to preach the prince of the verses of the book of Jude, verse 24 and verse 25. I ought to have some amens because y'all was in church school. Amen. And if I'm saying something you learned or re was reminded of or informed of or whatever of, then you ought to say amen to help a homeboy preacher just preach. All right. I'm going to ask how choir y'all sing, do y'all sing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, yes, yes. On a roll. Thank you, Sustina. Um, our kids have done such a great job. That we've put this together. Um, media ministry, are we ready? Pastors on a roll. All right. Thank you, Sustina. We're ready. Yeah. There we go. Technology failed us, but we're going to win this battle.
Give them another encouraging hand. Them to continue doing what they are doing. Amen. Let's receive our music ministry. They're going to do what they prepared to do. Then we'll be back for preaching.
But daily, wonderful. That's why he right with me. Fight, contend, do battle. 
And if you hang on in there, you're going to get to verse 24 and verse 25. Now unto him. Underline that word him. That pronoun, third person singular pronoun. I think I got that right underline him now unto him now watch what him can do that is what him is a after all that stuff prior to verse 24 he's able to keep you from falling and not only from falling but one day, here's what he's going to do. He's going to present you. He's going to take the imperfect and make the imperfect, though you're still imperfect, he's going to label us as being faultless. I got a whole lot of them, y'all. I, 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 I ain't about to tell y'all mine. And I ain't going to let you tell me yours. He's going to present you faultless before the presence, watch this, of his glory. And he's going to do it with great exceeding. We've been hearing this thing every, just about every Sunday at benediction time. Verse 25. To the only wise God. He ain't just God, but he's wise. Uh, our, it's for every born again person, our Savior. Yeah, yeah. Be glory yeah, yeah. and majesty, dominion and power. Yeah. Here's how long it's going to be, both <laughs> in the present yeah. and in the future. Now and ever, and because it's complete, Jude says, Amen. I want to talk to y'all about, and I ain't going to be long. I don't know if my boss and good Lord gave me this strength just sometimes, so I'm going to do it as long as I can go. I want to talk about him able. Are y'all going to help me talk to y'all about that? Him able. I know that don't, don't that, 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 that um, him able don't, don't sound too good, but it is good, y'all. As I temper my temperament and as I pace my passion to pull, project, and promote proven principles provided by this most participating passage for preaching, that is proclamated with power and purpose. Y'all, it may not look like it, but boy, I am most excited. I am most filled with enthusiasm to say sound state into your ears that if you don't walk away from this passage knowing anything else, you ought to walk away from this pericope knowing that him is able. Yeah. Are y'all going to help me preach to y'all? I mean, when you get in the front door of the text, and by the time you get out of the back door, if you don't learn anything about the text, you ought to learn at least just, just this one thing. That it does not matter what you're in, how you got into it, how you think you might get out of it. You ought to know, I wish I could do some Jerry Black stuff and, and make it um, dramatize. You ought to know that the God that we serve, he is most able. Watch this, y'all. He's able to lift you. When I get to your address, you ought to just shout. He's able to hold you. He's able to bless you. 
he's able to uh, correct you. He's able uh, to make you over. He's able to keep you when you can't keep yourself. He's able to keep your body healthy. He's able to pull you. He's able to push you. He's able to pride you. He's able to pick you up. He's able to turn, y'all acting like you don't know him is able. He's able to turn you all around and set your feet on solid ground. He's able to feed you. He's able to clothe you. He's able to keep you in in your right mind. He's able to water you. He's able to improve you. He's able to strengthen you. He's able to lift you without losing you, to bruise you, and still yet use you. He's able to care for you while he's crippling you. I wish I had one Mount Nemo witness that knows he is able. I said to y'all, him, him, that personal, third person pronoun. I said him. Oh, I wish I wouldn't. I said him is able. Huh, huh, huh. Huh. Let me just dig in the text just a little bit so y'all can know I did my homework. I know y'all caught this in church school and I know y'all was instructed by some wonderful teachers. Y'all had some good, I heard y'all in y'all classes. But, but let, me, let me just walk just a little bit so you know I did my homework. Because some of y'all think just because you don't see pastor in the class uh, that pastor ain't paying attention uh, to the lesson. Uh, you ought not walk out of this room knowing the day that is uh, the absolute. And I know what's going on in the classes. Uh, and I know uh, what the teachers are saying. Uh, and I know uh, they are right on time. And I, I wish I had a Christian education witness in here. And I know uh, that's going on. Uh, and I know now watch this watch this let me drop some stuff on you that probably wasn't dropped on you in the class y'all mind if I outline this chapter huh, let's see if I can get this verses 1 and 2 is his introduction verses 3 and 4 he begins sounding the alarm Verses 5 through 16, he begins his argument. And then when you get to verses 17 up to verse 25, he says, I've introduced myself, who I am. I've sounded the alarm. I started to write one way. I had to start sound the alarm. Now I'm giving you my argument. But let me close not with an alarm, not with my argument, but let me close with an admonition. I didn't get y'all that way. Let me get another um, outline. Verses 1 through 4 is his explanation. Verses 5 through 16 is his exposition. Verses 17 through 25 is his exhortation. Come a little closer. He says, let me tell you what you got to do. Let me just drop this in your ear. Fight contend do battle and when the battle is over and if you fought a good fight just know that the God we serve is able to keep you from falling have I got a witness James the brother of Jesus Jude the brother of Jesus. And um, um, if you did this, you say, they are the half brothers. Um, 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 Jude, Jude um, was not a believer. Now, watch this, y'all. They had Jesus in their house. I'm going somewhere with this. They had Jesus close up. 
and steal. Boy, you caught that preaching concept. And steal did not believe. Now, 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 that was bad, y'all. Yes, <laughs> but watch this. That's still going on. We got folks showing up in our churches. And don't you be fooled. We got some, we got some of everything in the church. But you better know we got Jesus in the church too. And still, yet there's some folk come to church every Sunday morning and still don't believe in Jesus. They waited until after his death. Now his family members were a part of the group that was in the upper room waiting for the, um, the Holy Spirit to come down. But they, they had Jesus close up and still, what, the sort of question is, what does Jesus have to do for us today, although he's close up for us to believe? Come on. I said, I'm asking, the, what does Jesus have to do today, although he's close up for us to believe? I mean, uh, after we've been through a pandemic, pan meaning all, demos meaning people, pandemic meaning all people. So whether you were in the United States, uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia, China, we all was under this pandemic. Uh, after all that God has done through the pandemic, uh, some did lose their lives. That was the will of God. Uh, but for us who are still alive and been through it, uh, and some of you had COVID uh, and you made it through, uh, and some of you never did get COVID uh, and you're still here, uh, what does God have to do uh, such that his son uh, can be accepted uh, after all he did in the pandemic somebody ought to be able to say I can't accept this man called Jesus dude he says he says I started off let me just run through this thing and get where I'm going to get and then I'm out of here he says I started off with the intent of one thing. But when I got, let me, let, me, let me make it relevatory to the church. I started off with one thing to tell the church. But when I got to the church, y'all don't throw nothing at me. When I got to the church, there are some folk uh, that, 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 that because uh, they were doing some things, uh, I, I, I had to tell and switch my message around. I came, yeah, I said, I came to talk about uh, our common salvation. But there was some false uh, Negroes up in the church that was just, now, the question is, uh, how did they get in? Can I give y'all an answer? They walked in the door just like everybody else. You see, there are some folk who came to church to have church today. Then there are some folk who didn't come to have church. They came to see what was else going on. But baby, watch this. If I was you, I wouldn't waste my time and my energy, get dressed, get all make up, get all haired up to come to church to look at y'all. No, if I'm going to do all that, I'm coming to church to have some church. And if you sitting next to somebody who acting like they didn't come to have church, you ought to tell them, baby, you're sitting on a shouting pew. This ain't no pouting pew. And if you didn't come to have church, if you came with some false ideas in your head, you need to get off of this pew. Matter of fact, you need to get out of this building because I came in this house up in here, up in here, up in here to have some church. Y'all still with me? And he says, he says, I'm still, in, I think I'm still in verse one. He says, sanctified by God the Father. And watch this, preserved in who? Jesus Christ. Now it's important to catch that preserved in Jesus Christ. My mama, 
who now spirit rests in the bosom of the almighty God. My mama used to do some stuff that some of y'all probably did. My mama used to take, what brother Ella's at? My mama used to take canned goods and preserves and preserve them. I didn't really know what she was doing back in them days. I just knew we had all kind of jars in the, in the cabinet with all kind of stuff in it, figs and, and all that kind of stuff. And I knew, I knew it would sit there months on top of months. And watch this, when we open it up, come on, come on country folk. I ain't the only country folk in it. It was, it was still fresh. It was still good because mama had preserved it. Watch this, when you get saved, God says you are gonna hold your salvation but I'm going to hold your salvation. And it doesn't matter what come on you. It don't matter what you go through. Your salvation will still be good because I'm going to preserve it. You don't hold your salvation no matter how good you try to act. And let me push it, but no matter how good you think you are, all of us at the right time it's candidates, watch this. All of us at the right time is our candidates to do anything I'm going too long, y'all. With anybody for any reason any time and that's although you were being preserved. But thank God when we mess up and we repent. He's got a yeah, divine erase. And and you know sometimes you know when you're writing on the board, sometimes the eraser don't take everything off the board. But it ain't like that with the Lord. When the Lord began erasing, he wipes out everything and he throws it into a sea. But you got some good pew members who like to go walking in the sea, swimming in the water. Although God put up no sign, no fishing sign, they try to go back and get all of your past stuff. Well, baby, they ain't no better. You ain't no better than them. But thank God he is preserving our salvation. And it says, fight, contend, do battle. Because some crooked folk have got in the church. They crept in. I don't know if it was silently or noisily, but they crept in. Now all these years have passed by, y'all, and we still got some folk just like that creeping in when we ought to keep them out. Let me hold. Let me go on about the business. Huh, let me go on about the business. But but watch this. He says. He says. He says. They're they're purporting that you can just live any kind of way, do any kind of thing, and God ain't gonna do a doggone thing about it. Let me tell you something. The same God that is our loving God. I wish I had a witness there. Let me say it again. The same God that is our loving God. Come on, hell help me. I said the same God that is our loving God. It's the same God that is our punishing God. Yes, God loves us, but uh, if you don't believe God will punish you, uh, you just keep doing what you're doing, how you're doing it, when you're doing it, where you want to do it, with whom you want to do it. When God gets tired of it, uh, he knows how to ring you in. And if he don't ring you in, uh, he can solve it by death. He can solve it by sickness. Uh, God knows uh, how to handle terror. I ain't talking about y'all, I'm talking about me. He knows how to handle Terry. His, Jude said, let me give you some proof. Y'all remember Israel? Y'all remember Israel? I ain't asking y'all if y'all remember Israel. I'm telling y'all what Jude said. Y'all remember Israel, he says? He says, Israel 
how God did so much for them, but he still punished them. I don't have time to dive deep into this because there's a lot of stuff in this and you got to make sure you interpret this thing right uh, and say it right. Uh, but y'all, he says, y'all remember the disobedient angels? God handled them. And he's now got them chained up and waiting for their judgment. Then he says, you, 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 you remember that wicked city? Sodom well, 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 well. and Gomorrah. But we ain't got to go to Sodom and Gomorrah, y'all. Omaha. Matter of fact, we ain't just got to go to Omaha. We can go to your address. And matter of fact, we ain't got to stand outside. We can go on the inside. That's at your address, some wickedness is going on. That's at my address, uh, some wickedness is going on. Uh, but watch this, God ain't going to let it go on forever. Uh, at one time, there's going to be some punishment. Um, right now, watch this. Right now, Jesus has on his mediatorial garments. He's sitting on the right-hand side of his father. And he's saying, forgive them. They don't know. I wish I could say it the way I want to say it. They don't know what the heck they doing. I want to say something else, y'all. They, they don't know, not that Jesus said that, that's me saying, you know, paraphrasing. Uh, they don't know what the heck they doing. But Father, if you will, just give them a pass just one more time. And somebody ought to raise your hand and tell the God, thank you, that he gave you a pass just one more time today. He woke us up. That means he gave us a pass. He started us on our way. That means he gave us a pass. He's keeping us right now in church. That means he gave you a pass. You got your health, your strength, you got your breath in your body, and y'all still sitting quiet. That means he gave you a pass. If you are excited about God giving you a pass, you ought to lift up those hands and say, Lord, I thank you for giving me another pass. <laughs> Lord, I, I, I really don't have a, the pencil there, but I'm, I'm gonna, he gave me what I needed. Uh, and so, 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 he says, he says, uh, there's some wicked stuff going on. God's going to punish it. But he, he says, I can't just tell you the bad stuff I gotta also give you some good stuff I can't all just discourage I gotta encourage and so let me encourage you by this no no I don't need that man I need to do something else he says he says he says let me encourage you um pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm almost where I need to get y'all. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Somewhere around verse 14 through 20. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean when it says pray in the Holy Spirit? Look how y'all quiet. Why I got quiet. Y'all said, Pastor, tell us. She the only one caught it. Y'all say, Pastor, tell us. Here it is. When it, says, when it says pray in the spirit, it means, just simple, let the Holy Spirit lead you in your praying. In other words, he's telling us we don't even know what to pray for unless the Holy Spirit he takes our groaning and our moaning and uh, our unearnest prayers. He translates them for us. Uh, and by the time it gets to God, uh, he translates that thing and God hears our prayer. I just want to tell you when you get down on your knees, uh, whether you're standing up, uh, you ought to pray uh, in the Holy Spirit. Uh, let the Holy Spirit lead you uh, in your prayer. He says, he says, let me cut across the field because I'm losing my time. He says, remember what the apostles taught you. Yeah. Now, that's key. 
But that's key. You know why? Y'all say why. why. It's key. You know why? why? i tell you why. Here's why. How many of us have heard, <coughs> how many of us have heard, um, how many of us have heard somebody call apostle so-and-so? Yeah. 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 Come on. How many of us have heard somebody call apostle so-and-so? I ain't talking about I'm just talking about the word of God. How many of us have heard that? Y'all ain't saying it. Is that you, Mallory? I didn't know you was here. I'm sorry. Hell, good to see you. Um, God, I got to get some more glasses. How, 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 how many of you have heard somebody say apostle this and apostle that? Come on. Come on. How many of you got some, some cousins that's apostles? How many of you got some neighbors that's apostles? That call themselves apostles? Y'all done got scared. I came too far back here. Huh? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see y'all. How many of you know, really, seriously, how many of you have heard apostle this, apostle that? Now, let me give you the qualifications of an apostle. The qualifications, an apostle is just one that has been sent and commissioned with a message. But let me give you the qualifications of an apostle. An apostle, my wife, my wife I heard her saying some stuff, uh, an apostle is one who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. Y'all say witness the resurrection of Jesus. And then an apostle is one who not only witnessed the resurrection of Jesus, but an apostle is one who walked with Jesus. Now, if I got my math correct, I don't think there's anybody alive who walked with Jesus. I'm just giving y'all the qualifications. I don't think there's anybody alive who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah, we talk about it how he was laid on a rock and that rock stood up inside of a rock and that rock uh, got out of a rock and that rock that got out of a rock put a foot on a rock and that rock that put a foot on a rock uh, said, uh, with cosmic omnipotence, I've got all power in my hand. But ain't none of us in here witnessed that resurrection. So to that group back there that said you got a neighbor that's calling themselves apostles, uh, you can tell them uh, you ain't no apostle because you didn't see Jesus get up. And you ain't no apostle uh, because you didn't walk the face of the earth when Jesus uh, walked the face of the earth. Uh, but he says, remember what the apostles uh, say. Then he gets to, I got to get to this last verse so I can, I've been up a little bit too long. Then he says, he says, remember the apostle said, then he gets to where I want to get. Him, able. Fight, contend, do battle. Don't let that false stuff they putting out get you off course. You've already been preserved. That means the Lord is already holding your salvation. And then when you get into verse 16, 6, and then verse 13, you will read a word in the King James Version, I think, that says reserved. In the original language, that word reserved is the same word for preserved. But uh, um, whereas we've been preserved in salvation, in verse 16 and 13, it talks about uh, um, uh, um, some, some other folk being reserved for their judgment. And so uh, he says, uh, after you have gone through all that stuff, although those false people is in the church, they crept in. I, I, they don't, he didn't tell us how, but I, I, I want to suggest they just walked in with everybody else. Yeah. Let me ask y'all a question. I should have asked this earlier. Who came to church with you today? Yeah. See how y'all got quiet? I mean, how many of us walked in here with some pure thoughts? Boy, y'all ain't saying amen. How many?
many of us walked in here with some impure thoughts? Who came to church with you on today? Let me go. Let me go. So he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, when he says, now unto you, now unto him who is able. He's not keeping you from falling. He is not talking about your salvation. He's talking about though you've had to contend with this fake foolish stuff, I want to tell you about somebody who's able to keep you from stumbling. Have I got a witness in here? I wish I had one person in here that knows uh, that you've been into some stuff, but he kept you from falling. You've got yourself tangled up in some stuff, but he kept you from stumbling. You were tied up, you got identified with it, uh, but he kept you from stumbling. Uh, Y'all don't want nobody to know that you've been in some tough situations. Uh, anybody in here other than me been in a tight spot? I've been in so many tight spots. Uh, when a tight spot come now, uh, I'm a professional of how to handle uh, a tight spot. Because when I get in a tight spot, uh, I just remember my salvation, uh, what the Lord is doing, uh, how the Lord is doing it for me. And I reach up and throw up my hands to God. Uh, and whatever tight spot I'm in, uh, he transforms that tight spot uh, to a welcoming spot. Uh, he says, I can keep you uh, from uh, stumbling. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible is a hymn book. Yeah, the Bible is a hymn book, y'all. Not H-Y-M-N, but H-I-M. The Bible is a hymn book. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Now unto that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, Think according to the power that worketh in us uh, unto yeah. be glory in the church by Christ Jesus uh, throughout all ages to the end of the world. Uh, now unto yeah. that is able to keep us from falling. Uh, the Bible is a hymn book. Uh, him was born in Bethlehem. Uh, him walked the streets of uh, Nazareth. Uh, him, uh, yeah, is uh, all over the Bible. Uh, he's Matthew's king. He's Mark, suffering servant. He's Luke, great physician. He's John, words made flesh. Come here, Old Testament. Him is Moses, bush burning on fire. Him is Joshua's battle like. Him, yeah, is the one Isaiah saw in the temple. Him is the one that saved your soul. Him is the one that's keeping you right now. The Bible is a hymn book. Y'all got to sit down so I can get out of here now. Hymn book. Hymn book. And him is able. Him, the pronoun, able, the adjective. Him, y'all didn't catch it, the pronoun, able, the adjectives, him, who he is, able, what he can do. Let me say it one more time. I'm, I'm shouting my dog on stuff and preaching, him, who he is, yeah. ah, able what he's able to do. Is anybody in this room other than me know he's able? Come on, anybody know he's able? He can take your sickness and make you whole. He can take a, a mechanical knee, put it in a good leg, and make you walk all over again. Him can pick you up. Him can plant you around. Him can turn you around, turn back around and turn you around, and then place you where you need to go. I wish I had a witness that know him is a... Hey. Keep you from falling. Present your faultless. I'm done, y'all. With great exceeding, 
Joe. My daddy, y'all remember my daddy? My daddy, um, he was so, just tippler, way back in the few weeks when I first got him, he used to always say some great things about my daddy. Not just trying to rub me, but she knew they were true. She picked him up. Um, my daddy was so far beyond his time. My daddy came here. Y'all remember that? And he preached a sermon. And he exposed himself in front of y'all and preached a sermon called Stay in the Boat. He wasn't preaching to y'all. He was preaching to me. He shared with me all of his personal failures. And he was, he was daddy enough and be honest with me so he could help me. And if y'all remember, it brought him to tears in front of y'all. And he looked at his boy, I was right about in that area right there, he looked at his boy and said, boy, stay in the boat. And y'all, I've stayed in the boat. Then he came back another time. He said, now, I, I talked to my son. Now I want to talk to y'all. He said, I told him, stay in the boat. But I want to tell y'all, stay connected. Huh. He was so far in his time. And, and my daddy, while alive, I'm going somewhere with this. Y'all wonder where I'm going. My daddy, while alive, he wanted to be able to point to his son with great exceeding joy and say, that's my boy. Are y'all getting it now? God wants to be able to point to you and I who he keeps from falling and point to us with great exceeding joy and able to say, that's my child. I know they've messed up, but I kept them from falling. That's my child. And I want to be able to do it with a great exceeding joy. Let me close it. I'm not going to be able to shut it down like I wanted to, son, but let me close it this way. Um, um, this doxology... This benediction, say doxology. Wow. Say benediction. benediction. It's the prince of benedictions in the Bible. It's the most magnificent doxology in my mind in the Bible. One through the chapter one through five gives purpose. Six through sixteen gives a description of the false teachers. Seventeen through twenty-four talks about the defense against false teachers, and then verse 25 comes about the doxology. It's a doxology of grandness. It's a doxology of grandiose. It's an eloquent doxology. It's an excellent doxology. It's, it's a benediction that's worth repeating. Are y'all with me? To him who's able to keep us from falling. Say that with me. To him who's able to keep us from falling. Watch this. This is the shouting part, y'all. And to present us faultless. I'm, I've, got, I've, I've been tarnished. Well, let me come this way. It doesn't matter how good you look today. If you live long enough, yeah, you going that goodness going ain't going it ain't going to stay like that. It's the street she's it no matter how fine you are right now. 36 24 36. Y'all got that thing going on? Well, that Coca-Cola bottle ain't going to always be a Coca-Cola bottle. 
Brothers, no matter how tall and handsome and all that stuff, you're going you're gonna to have an, an encounter with some bees. You're going to need Ben Gay. The hair going to start to be gone. Why y'all laughing? But watch this. He says, I can, want, I, I, I can present you faultless. You imperfect, but I can put you in a stage where I can put you before me. And I, gonna, I ain't going to see all of the imperfections, but I'm going to see you being perfect. Y'all, that's enough to shout about. He says, present your faultless. Let me wrap this up. Present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding, exceeding. I want to point to you and say, that's my child. To the only what? Wise God. I'll say. It's not enough to say a savior. Boy, I wish I had, I, I could really get on this thing like I wanted to. It's not enough to say he's the Savior. You got to be able to say he is. No, not our. You, 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 yeah, it's all right to say he's our. But you got to get to the point where you can say he's m my Savior. I want to talk to the born again folk in here. Born again folk, y'all say, Hey, hey. y'all ain't loud enough. Born again folks say hi. hi. Now give God a hand of praise for being saved. You got to be able to say he's a, my savior. Poor, I wish I could get there. You, you earn can't not only be able to say hey and thee and our, but you got to be able to say oh, he's my savior. Be glory, some total of who he is, and majesty. There's nobody as majestic and great as him. Him is the only one that can pick a sun and perch it in the sky and call it a sun and let it look like a, a, a ball of fire in the ballroom of the universe. And if that sun would move one degree forward, it'll burn us up. But if we move one degree backwards, we would freeze us up. He is the only one that's so majestic who knows every string of hair on your head. Even if you went bought the hair, he know every string of hair you went bought. He's the only one that knows all the eyelashes you have on your eyes. Although it may be fake. He knows how many. He's the only one that knows every step you take, when you take that step, how you take that step. He is the only God that is majestic that can be in Illinois, in Nebraska, and Louisiana all at the same time. He's the only God who ain't got nowhere to go because he encompasses uh, every inch of space uh, on the earth uh, when he leaves a spot he's already at the other spot before he left the spot and when he gets to the other spot uh, he's at the other spot uh, before he got to the other spot uh, and when he leaves both spots uh, he's at every point in between both spots uh, he's the only one uh, who is the majestic God uh, that uh, um, died on Friday but early Sunday morning y'all tell me what he did early Sunday morning I know dominion and power ecclesia power that's the Greek word for this one in this one he's got the right and the authority to use power now, last week, the preacher mentioned the dynamo power, which is the dunamis power. And he also mentioned the exclusive power, which is the, the right to use the dunamis power. 
What good is it to have dunamis power and you ain't got oozy your power? What good is you got dynamo power but you ain't got the right to use the power that you got? He's got both powers. He's all powerful. Does not matter what's before him. God can handle it. I wish I had somebody in here that knew that God can handle it. You might have to uh, um, walk on the Red Sea floor, but God can handle it. You may have to sleep in the den of lions uh, all night long, uh, but God can handle it. You might have to go in a fiery furnace, but God can handle it. You may have to spend a jail and uh, spend a night in jail uh, and sing midnight melodies uh, while you are an incarcerated sufferer, but God can handle it handle it. You may have to be embarrassed. You may have to be knocked down. You may have to be thrown out. But baby God can handle whatever it is. And y'all is now henceforth and forever. Do y'all know how long forever is? Y'all don't act like y'all know how long forever is. Do y'all know how long forever is? Y'all, yeah. Boy, do that one more time. Oh, long. Do y'all know how long forever is? Forever is forever and ever. It does not matter when you're in the hands of God how long forever is. God got you in His hands. I'm just wondering, uh, is there anybody in the room other than me who knows uh, that you're in his hands? Can I get a witness in here? Oh, anybody know that you're in his hands? And when you're in his hands, uh, the devil in hell cannot pluck you out. Ah! Downs, he keeps on blessing you in the in and the out. He keeps on blessing you. Ah, 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 yes, say yeah. Ah, 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 yeah. I'm done now. Stand with me all over We all over the building are standing. I, I didn't mean to preach like that, Joe. I meant to preach about 15 minutes. Say it. But we a pride. Have to say nothing else, just tell them. Tell them. I am Come on, say it again. If you're redeemed, you can sing this.
There's a person who needs to respond, whether in this building or out. We pray that the next time that your son is presented or you know, to them that they would have the holy boldness to accept and receive and to be a part of your church. Thank you for all of us who are now saved that you are keeping and preserving. Thank you for holding our salvation. In Jesus' name, the only name that really matters upon the face of the earth, whereby every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. In Jesus' name we pray. And all persons of faith said amen. amen. Give God another hand of praise. That's something I need. But Lord, then let me say it so it'll come out in another sermon. Amen. Um, we're getting ready now to eat of our Lord's body and drink of our Lord's blood. Music ministry, if y'all give us something. Lord, so 
hold your hand high. The brothers that get to you at the cross. At the cross. At the cross. When Servant of this Lord's Supper, um, I'm going to ask Brother Newton if he would pray the prayer. Ask God for our forgiveness of sin. And as we remember him with eating his body, the bread represents his body, and the cup represents his blood. Heads about. says hi look down low we come to you dear heavenly father saying thank you thank you for this daily bread which we are about to receive thank you for the precious blood in which we are about to take the heavenly father we thank you for all that you have done for us That night, our Lord had his disciples in the upper room. He took the bread, the Bible says, he blessed it, the Bible says he broke it, and then it says he break it. He blessed, broke, and break. And he gave it to his disciples and said, as often as you eat of this bread, you do show the remembrance of the giving of my body. And they all did eat. Bread being representative of his body. Then the Bible says, for the preachers, the Bible says he took the cup and said to the same group, this cup is representative of the giving of my blood for the purpose of the remission of sins. As often as you drink of this cup, you do show remembrance of the giving of my blood. And they did drink. Jesus said, drink ye all of it. Amen. At the I need you to stay at your seats. We're getting ready to do our tithes and offering. Our brothers will come for our offering. And as you come around, we'll have an usher on each end. They're going to receive our waste of our Lord's Supper items. By faith. good. Amen. All 
right. I don't know which brother is going to pray. Oh, 